Hello everyone and uh, Happy New Year and welcome uh, all my friends from the forums. Uh, today I'm updating the uh, a video on the uh, amp draw of the, the little window motor. I've made a few changes in the circuit. I've paralleled the uh, two trigger tro coils and I'm using that now uh, as the power coil so that changes everything significantly in the motor. So right now let me move over here to the uh, amp meter. You can see that the meter is uh, oscillating between 70 and 80 microamps. So that's quite a bit lower than my earlier videos where I showed the motor running at 200 to 250 microamps. You can see the capacitor is at a voltage of uh, 2.315 and uh, you notice it's not dropping and it would really be easy to fake a unity video here but let me show you what's going on actually I'll uh, increase the digits on the readout to 5 so here's the decimal point and this would be a tenth of a volt, a hundredth of a volt, a thousandth of a volt, a ten thousandth of a volt and a hundred thousandth of a volt if I'm if I'm right about that I don't know I don't I've never had to work in in those numbers before but you can see the capacitor is actually dropping the uh, capacitor is dropping at a rate of 0 0.022 volts per every hour so actually the uh, motor would run for days on this little um, uh, super cap. I have this other cap in the circuit here because it smooths out. It's a sort of insignificant. It's only a thousand microfarad, and it smooths out the uh, the pulse from the uh, circuit a little bit for the the meter reading. I can take that out in a little bit. Uh, as you can see in the circuit, I added a whole pile of uh, one mega ohm resistors, and right now the motor's running probably on about five mega ohms. If I give the motor a little bit of a spin, you can see that right now the cap is charging and below zero, which means that the energy is going back in. Right now the motor is running at unity. And now it's starting to take a little bit of current back out of the uh, capacitor. You can see it's slowly going up. So that'll run for quite a while down here at um, well, 20 microamps, 25 microamps. But that's not what I came here uh, for today. We're going to take the motor apart and I'll show you a little bit about how it's made. Here's a screw in the top here. That holds the uh, bearing bushing in place. These are the wire guides. You can see there's some nice radiuses put on here so that it it's easier to wind the uh, windings. There's some little grooves cut in here that fit on these two uprights. So when that's clipped in place, it keeps everything in alignment. saddest looking Allen wrench you ever saw and I'm a ex-tool and die maker. Now the shaft slides right out and you can remove the rotor. Oop, one of my bearings came along with it. Put that back in there for a minute. This was made from uh, a piece of mild uh, machine steel. It's a quarter inch shaft going through the center. Uh, notice that 
when I machine these, I machine a little shoulder to make sure that nothing rubs on the outer side of the bearings. I have a bearing holder in the front. A few insulators here for the coil. You can see here how the bearing pushes in. And that's just a 3 8 bore right straight through with a little shoulder on it up here. You can see a little shoulder on that sleeve here. There's also a sleeve in, in the back of the motor. I don't know if I'm holding it. You can see that. Alright, now the coil will come right up off of there. There you go. The coil I have, uh, I have some heavier gauge uh, copper wire around there for holding it in place. Um, on the back here, I use some heat shrink tubing and put another piece of uh, copper around there to hold everything nice and tight. So now you can see the, the framework a little bit better. Hole in the bottom here kind of helps you grab things and, and get it apart. Uh, let me take it apart a little bit more. There's two slots milled in here, the thickness of the plastic. And then there's two screws from the bottom that are counterboard. So, you know, there's, there's nothing to this. This is no special design. It's just typical of any window motor that you're going to see out there. This is just a shorter sleeve with the same kind of a bearing fit in it. You can see the bearing pops out just like that. You don't want to make these very tight, I'll tell you that much. This should go like this, put it in there, and you just press it in and that's it. Otherwise you're going to squeeze it. You can see some cracks here. I busted the motor all to smithereens here a while back doing some experiments with the uh, uh, toroid uh, drive coils like on the Orbo and Stern uh, sites. Uh, wasn't too impressed. The current draw was way too high, but it was a fun experiment until I threw a magnet. So there you have it. So one, one piece goes here, one piece goes there. And now you can see here how this is kind of a, a nice feature. Uh, the, how the sleeve functions. The sleeve you can slide in and out. Take up the extra space in between here. So that's what the, the screw in the top for is. Put that in there you can